So you talk about pay, playing with LeBron. Obviously, we got to talk about the meme of the year. Uh, Bron on that record-breaking bucket. You was wide-ass open, <laughs> calling for the ball. <laughs> you know what's crazy? We run, we run through that same play in practice, and whenever LeBron sees me on that wing, he always tells me to cut. And if you have a smaller defender, Post your ass up in the paint, bro. Uh -huh. yo, yo, get a big target. Get an easy point. It's easier to score two points than that three-pointer, a contested three. Mm -hmm. So whenever he got that, I was running down. But every time since it got to 12 points, I'm trying to look up like, uh -huh. all right, we got 10 points, eight, six. All right. Oh, shoot, we got to turn over. All right, get back on defense, run back. And then all I'm doing is just everything that they were telling me to do. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then when he shot it, I'm like, Wait, everybody camera. Oh, shoot, that was a shot. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so it was just like, it was kind of a nice. super surreal moment. But it was just like, at the same time, we were still trying to play to win the game and everything and yeah. play the right way. But it was just like, I didn't, I didn't really even recognize it till it, till it actually happened. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, shit, they got me on a meme now. Are, are you are, <laughs> salty at all that he didn't pass you that rock because it would have been a better shot? <laughs> nah. So I, was, I, I, I don't give a fuck if you broke the record, bro. Give me the rock. Because nah. <laughs> if thing. he would have missed it, I knew it was close. I didn't know it was two points, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I for sure would have passed it out. I was like, bro, this ain't my time. <laughs> like, we it, came here to like, see him. Funny. People don't realize sometimes that that person's in the moment, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone else isn't. Right, unless we're at home. This is unless you're on the bench. I mean, like the players that's on the court. You don't really. You're not counting how many points he needs. The bench obviously knows, and the person himself knows. But for the for the most part, like when you look down, like I think Russ took some shots. Somebody else took some shots. They're not really. You know, they're just. It's just playing. You're just. Yeah. You're just unless he comes out and say, "Yo, I, I need two two more points, y'all." Then they're like, "All right, all right," and then everybody do. Other than that, for the most part. Usually, when you're in the real time, you don't really understand what's going on. You're just doing what you do best. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's exactly what I was doing, just doing what I felt was best at that point, what they told me to do, what I felt was an advantage right there. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, when it all came into play, I didn't even realize until after he made it, I was like, oh, shoot, that was a shot. <laughs> <laughs> so it was cool. It was cool to be a part of that, too, just to see that mm -hmm. and just to say, like, oh, shoot, like, we are somewhat a part of history. So let, let, let's move this thing forward. You won a chip with the Nuggets, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. How does it feel to be an NBA champion? How did it feel to go back, <laughs> smack the Lakers in the minimum amount of games required to advance to the finals, come back, <laughs> do it on their court? That's minimum. What call it here. That's what we call the it. The minimum. Minimum. Some people call it other things. Don't call it. <laughs> Shut up. No, we don't call that, that here. Out of respect for Gil, Lakers fan. But, uh... Just what was it like for you now to be an NBA champion to kind of see a dream you probably had as a kid come true? It's still kind of surreal to me. You know, I still can't really fathom it. And it's, it's, it's one thing that you always dream about, but it's like when you get into that opportunity, it's like, wow, you're really here with a team like that. You know, and, you know, uh, everyone on that Denver team was just so locked in, so together, and it was just, it was a, it was something special to see because we knew as soon as we got out of the first round, we felt like, all right, we got some confidence, all right? We beat, we beat a really good, you know, hostile team with them. But when we, got to, when we got to Phoenix and we beat Phoenix, especially that last game on their home floor like that, our confidence was through the roof. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it wasn't no celebration whatsoever. Everybody was just like, oh, yeah, we can do this. Yeah, we got one. We, we might have one. Yeah. We might have one. So everybody was so locked in into the Lakers right then and there. It was just like, yo. We didn't stand a chance. <laughs> but, but from, from your side, did the Lakers, were they even a threat to you guys? Keep it real. <laughs> I mean, they were a threat because, of course, you still have, like, you still can't bypass LeBron's greatness and AD's greatness. Mm -hmm. But for us, we all had the confidence to just like, okay, they got two superstars, but like, we got a real good team ahead of us. Mm -hmm. uh, like, we got a real great team. We all play together. We got key pieces that, you know, really play well together. And then Jamal's playing great. Jokic is playing outstanding. It's like, okay, we got a good vibe going. So I think everybody was feeling it, but nobody really, really was, like, really scared of, like, us getting beat, mm -hmm. to be honest. Like, right, okay. nobody really <laughs> felt like we were going to get beat. Like, of course, they might steal a game or two or anything. They felt like we were... Like, we, we feel like they were going to get a game or two, but, like, losing the series, we didn't feel like we were going to lose. Damn. 
Then they didn't even get, not again. I didn't either. I didn't feel like you guys were going to lose the series either, <laughs> even as a fan. They but shut up. up. I'm they just saying. Look at her jump. Yeah, that, that's, that, that, he's, a, he's a delusion. <laughs> debatable. He's a delusion. He said, he said debatable. <laughs> you can't accept reality and understand when somebody's just better than you. Like, uh, he's mad. Like, I'm a Laker fan, but I'm not stupid. Like, I'm not going to just go into it like, oh, yeah, we're about to beat the Nuggets, knowing damn well this roster they have. Like, come on. Just like, you know? the, like he was delusional. <laughs> he was delusional, thinking that the, the Heat was gonna beat y'all too. <laughs> well, he, was delusional. he said they, they was gonna beat y'all, and we laughed at that too. But you know, that's delusion. You know what I mean? Like you have to keep it real. So. <laughs> we got a game though, right? We didn't oh, get shit. swept. No, I'm I, I got a that. game. I, I think we need to. I, I question <laughs> Joe Laker um, loyalty. Oh, he finna kick. <laughs> I think we got to question her Laker loyalty. Mm. Why? Because as as that I'm honest. So that means you sat on this couch knowing that we wasn't going to win. You wasn't even delusional with us. No, I wasn't. I wasn't delusional that, that's, with you. That's, that's why I kept quiet. I didn't quit. I didn't, I, I don't care who I we didn't face. I'm delusional. <laughs> I'm delusional I'm every game. I don't care. Playing, yeah. That's Lakers <laughs> fandom in a nutshell. Whole Lakers star fans. Fans. Me, yes. We yes. play. No, nah, we win. <laughs> but me as a fan, like, I can look at the game and, the and tell which team is better on paper, and then you can take it off paper and say who has more heart and all that kind of stuff, and you come to a a real nigga decision in your head and say, they're better than us. When Craig fought Debo, did he say, damn, Debo better not? I'm going to grab this fucking brick. I'm going to grab this brick and I'm going to hit Debo's ass. One on one, yes. But I'm getting this brick. Oh, my God. But let's talk a little bit about, so you won the chip with the Nuggets. And I talked to you before, right after you won the championship. Mm -hmm. You were uncertain what you were going to do for agency. Two-year deal with the Heat. Go over there. So why was that, do you feel like, the best option for you to go over to the Miami Heat? Uh, for me, I thought the best option was just the Heat because of, you know, the personality of what they do. I prided myself on being the most conditioned big man when I'm out there. Mm. They pride themselves on, on having yes. great shaped people in their organization. Top from people that know how to play the game of basketball, want to work day in and day out. That's all I'm about. I'm always working. Before I even came here, I made sure I got my two-hour, you know, conditioning in, weightlifting in. And I didn't stop until I got every rep right until I wanted to, mm. you know, until I felt like it was good enough. You know, I don't stop until I feel like it was good enough. I'm going right back after I get done with this. So it's like, mm. the grind doesn't stop, but it's like, they carry themselves on, you know, their heat culture of just, you know, taking things, having, holding yourself accountable, you know, taking responsibility for your actions, you know, on and off the court, being yourself in the top shape of your life. A lot of guys are not in great shape. Mm -hmm. You know, some guys just have pure talent, but a lot of guys aren't in real, real, real game shape. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like, can you run up and down this court 10 times in a row as fast as you can without stopping? Yeah. Like, that's a real question you have to ask yourself, and that's why I prided myself on a lot. And then just being around the team, you know, a great organization, Eric Spolstra, a great coach, Pat Riley, a great GM, owner and everything. So it's like, you know, they all came to me, and they wanted me and everything, so I felt like it was a great decision. And don't forget, there's also a great like, opportunity going right for back you into the fire. as well. Absolutely. You know what right I mean? Back into like the fire. that the, number two, that could be a number one. You know what I mean? Like there's mm -hmm. opportunity for you if anything, if, God forbid, anything happens with their starting big man, or you take in his job. Anything. You know what I'm saying? That's a great opportunity there for you, and I hope you. No, it is. It's a great opportunity. Were you letting him know it all during the finals? Like, look. I got the answer for y'all. I'm just saying, like, you know what I mean? I see where y'all need, what y'all need. I can <laughs> definitely help fill that void. But have you been out there at all to work out and condition, doing any type of stuff, talk to Coach Poe? Like, I've been out there one time, talked to the players, you know, get acquainted with the area and everything. The humidity there is crazy. Ooh, I'm still trying to get used to that. Man, it's, it's hot out there, but... You know, I've, I'll be out there more towards the end of the month, really getting it in with the coaches in the gym nonstop, day in and day out, trying to get acquainted with the guys, you know, deal with the time change and everything. As of right now, it's just still training right now. Sure. And what did what you, you know about us? September 1st? Yeah. Right, yeah. Where do you mm -hmm. live now? I still live out here in LA. You know, smart man. <laughs> everybody, but you already know, everybody come out here for the summertime. You can't yeah, beat LA. Uh, yeah. You can't beat LA. I LA hoop summer. Too, and I live in well, I mean, looking for you, it'll, it'll be y'all winter during, but no, it'll be y'all summer. It's some, we have summer in December. Yeah, summer in December. Yeah. <laughs> that's when it gets hot? That's when your weather that's when it's about. Yeah. That's when it's about 75 to 82. That's the summer? Yes. Yeah, that's crazy. That's not bad. That's, that's not our bad. summer, yeah. <laughs> So you got to see Jimmy Butler on the other side. What impressed you most about his game, and, and what are you excited about being able to play with him and the rest of that squad? He was a pure dog. 
Like, he just, he holds himself accountable. He has the most confidence in himself and his teammates. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. No, no. no. <laughs> Confident coffee. Confidence coffee. Confidence nah, coffee. he does. You, you can't bypass what he's done throughout that whole playoff run. For them being in a play in a playing game, mm -hmm. winning both playing games to get to the NBA Finals. Well, they lost one. Oh, yeah, they did lose they only one. Got their they only got there because Giannis was hurt. Look, that's a Giannis don't get hurt game three, game five. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know. he was a shell of himself when he came back, but they they won. Can't take nothing from him. They won. Excuses, excuses. If you say Jimmy got Giannis that dog. don't go down. Is that beast or that dog? Well, first of all, the the conversation was who had more confidence, Jimmy or Jokic? Jokic. That was the original uh, conversation. Who had more confidence, mm. Jimmy or Jokic? Oh yeah. Who had the most confidence? They both in had the playoffs. Straight, See, they they both had straight confidence out there. Like you saw no glimpse of like. Jimmy bowing his head or like looking scared or anything. He was just like, all right, cool. But Yoke was just straight killed. It was a straight kill, just everything was just straight. He didn't want to react to literally anything until the game was over. So they were both like so even killed throughout the whole time. Mm -hmm. Even when we were on the road and we won game three, uh, yeah, we won game three. Mm -hmm. Yoke and everybody else was still like so even killed. Mm -hmm. Cause they were just like, bro, we can't, they already stole one from us, dog. Like if we come into their house, see what they did to Celtics, dog. Like they won, they, these motherfuckers can play, bro. Stop taking these niggas for granted, bro. Like don't take these niggas for granted. <laughs> I mean, we see uh, Yoke Joker and his demeanor kind of on the court, obviously super laid back. Looked like he was more excited about winning the horse race back in Serbia. <laughs> Than winning a chip, but does he ever does he turn up ever yell at you guys? I mean, is there ever where he gets emotional, spirited? <laughs> it was one time throughout the playoff where he actually showed emotion, and we were all like, oh, "Shoot, okay, yo, you in this, all right?" Because <laughs> <laughs> I think we ran a play wrong and turned the ball over like two or three times in a row. He was just like, "I don't fucking care about scoring. Just play the right fucking way." I it was, was in a timeout, wasn't it? Yeah, it was yeah, in a timeout. We were all just like, oh, yeah. okay, all right, it's too locked in now. <laughs> also, the play was trying to go to him, and they just kept turning the ball over? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's a team. Yeah, player. but he said he didn't care about scoring. Yeah, yeah just, like, just run the play. Just run the play. Yeah, yeah. 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 crazy thing is he doesn't care about scoring. Yeah, you can Dude is so passive, like he wants to get people open. He wants to pass the ball. That's so hard. That's so it's dope. like, it's easy as hell to play with him. Yeah. Because he's just naturally get like, he has a God-given talent for the game of basketball. Mm -hmm. But when you put him in a situation to where he, like, what he relishes at doing, it's a, it's a, rep, it's a recipe for disaster for the other team. <laughs> so what are things from this year's experience playing with Joker that you'll be able to now take from your game and apply throughout the rest of your career? You know, I, I, I respect his work ethic. You know, just seeing everything that he does to a T, day in and day out, even in a little, you know, a little measly warm-ups that you do before the before the practice or games or anything like that, you know, the bears and all that. You, you know, you go through like two or three of them, then you're like, all right, man, I'm I'm cool. Like I don't need no more of this. Now nah, you're going through the whole thing, from start to finish. Mm -hmm. He gonna be there right on time. He gonna end on time. He gonna do everything, everything. Don't cut corners. Everything he doesn't cut corner. Doesn't cut a corner at all. You would think he was he was a young rookie trying to make his way into the league, but he still holds that same accountability day in and day out. I respect the hell out of it. That's who AD should be working out with then, for real. And not giving him, that's, that's <laughs> like Rocky versus uh, AD Apollo Creed in this situation. I'm just saying, he's not giving, yeah. <laughs> he not giving him the secrets, man. <laughs> what? <laughs> Shots fired, man. Never fan, y'all. No, because he, he don't fuck with AD. Fan, AD, we on that grind, AD. If you can hear me, AD, man, you got to give Jokic yeah, all 75. Show me. Show me. <laughs> give him 75. Up. I don't care how you do it. I will break you. Ron, stand down. You don't stand, stand down. Reeves, stand one? down. You know what I mean? Stand down. I don't give we don't, we don't got to win nothing, right? It can be 75 to 130 as long as AD got 75. I, we hey, good. As long yeah. as he plays we good. in 65 games. We, we're doing 65. Okay, we'll see. What's up, everybody? As you know, Gills Arena is presented by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest and best way to play fantasy sports. You can pick higher or lower on your favorite player's fantasy projections, and you have the opportunity to win up to 20 times your money in a single night. We're doing five ways, the four ways, the three ways. You know, you can do them two ways, too, but the brewer bread is at the five way. Who, who are you rolling with right now? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah I just picked the five way. The WNBA. The WNBA. All five. Let's rock it. 
Let's get this yes, bread. Sir. Now, Underdog is available in 30 states and Canada, except Ontario. Get your minds right. <laughs> get on with the Underdog Fantasy crew. And if you want to get down, use promo code GILL and Underdog will match your first deposit up to $100. You put 100 in, they give you 100 right off the top. You start with 200, really get them pickups going. Everybody out there, make your next move your best move. Download the Underdog Fantasy app. Use promo code GILL and they will match your first deposit up to $100. You can't beat that. We appreciate y'all rocking with us. Keep watching, keep supporting the movement. I'll do it again. Use promo code GILL. Sound like a good promo code to me. Mm -hmm. Agent Zero. Change the game. Put that respect on his name. Look, with the honor call for greatness, the chosen a few that carry the gift of genius. Who do what they do? Who possess finesse of less with desire? It's true. I'ma say it loud, none other than who?